Hey, what's up everybody? In this video, I'm going to run through the new features that are available in version 3.5 of this spreadsheet. So if you have been following along in the videos, you know that this is a dividend tracking spreadsheet that works really well for Canadian and American stocks. And I've just released the latest version, which is version 3.5. Now I'm going to go over in this video all of the upgrades that version 3.5 includes and in the second half of the video I'm going to show existing users how to upgrade from a previous version to the new version and if you are not a user yet and you'd like to become one there is a link in the description below where you can get the spreadsheet and when you download it it will be the latest version available to you and in the future if there is a new version like a few months down the road or something like that I'll do a similar video going over the new upgrades upgrades and how you can upgrade from, you know, always, always from the old version to the new version. So there's no worries about that. So guys, um, the most, the, I think the biggest change to the dividend sheet that I've made in this version is support for the Neo exchange. As far as I know, no one else is doing Google Sheets with uh, full support for Neo. So you, you can put in any uh, ticker from the Neo exchange, for example, MindMed, like that, or um, the CDRs as well, so like pay. Ooh, I can't type. Uh, like PayPal, or for example, uh, M Amazon. Amazon. Uh, and it goes on for in. Like, it just keeps going on and on for any currently available Neo stock that you can think of right now. Um, the sheet will work. So it's going to give you the current price, and it's also going to automatically generate the name without error. And then if you were to log some transactions, for example, in your transactions tab of a buy of like, um, let's say like PayPal or something like that. And if you, I don't know, you bought one at a price of $1. Um, then we come back here. It's going to also accurately display you know, your unrealized gain in, in dollars and percent and all sorts of stuff like that. So let's take that out before I forget and uh, we can remove these. So this is this is one of the biggest changes for the latest version is full support for the Neo Exchange. There's also full support now for the New York Stock Exchange ARCA. It's the NYSE ARCA Exchange and also the NYSE American Exchange. So if we type in, for example, N -I -N -Y -S -E American, and then just a stock like CLM, something like that, this is also going to pull in properly with the name, price, and, and any dividend that you might be expecting as well. So in general, the spreadsheet is now working with the Toronto Stock Exchange, the Toronto Stock Venture Exchange, um, NYSE, NYSE American, NYSE ARCA, NASDAQ, and NEO. Okay, so let's just delete those. Um, the next thing that I changed was actually the source of the dividend information. Uh, previous versions were using Wallmine, and I've switched back to Yahoo Finance because I'm able to get a more stable connection. I know a lot of people were having issues with the dividend reporting 0 .00, uh, when that is in fact not the case. So the whole sheet has been switched back to Yahoo Finance, and it seems to be working much better. Um, it's actually gone from uh, Walmine. On Walmine, it was the trailing 12-month dividend, and Yahoo Finance is the forward annual dividend. So most stocks are going to see probably an increase in your expected yield um, or your expected annual income. Not It's not the case for every stock, but generally, if you switch over, you're probably going to see a change in your yield, and it's probably going to increase just a little bit. Um, on the portfolio tab, when you sort by different attributes here in the top, for example, let's just put this stocks in alphabetical order. Um, what's going to happen is you're going to momentarily have a loading issue here, like just there's going to be a tiny little bit of lag and you're going to maybe see like a few left over. And if that's the case, all you have to do is just refresh the page and it's going to clear all of those loads and uh, you're going to be seeing everything properly. That's definitely an improvement from previous versions because before, if there was uh, an artificial 0.00, .00 you just wouldn't, maybe you wouldn't notice because it would just be hiding in here. Um, but now it's very clear that you're going to see the loading and a couple dashes across. And yeah, just the ability to clear that with a simple page refresh should be really nice uh, for everyone that's using the sheet. Um, another improvement that I made is on the summary page is the, the month that your dividend bar chart starts in. So 
because when I made this sheet, it's hard to know what month you are going to start, you know, receiving your first dividends because there's a lot of different people using the sheet and for everyone, the month is different. And so previously you had to add in, you had to kind of customize this to um, be appropriate for you, but I've actually set it up now. So it's automatically going to detect the month that you first received your first dividend. And then the default will set to 12 months. And then all you have to do, if you need to adjust, if you need to add or subtract some rows, just if you need to add, just grab the bottom column and just drag it down a little bit. For example, that would add two more rows in my case, but I'm not ready for that yet. So I would just delete those. And um, yeah, or if you wanted to display less, for example, just delete a bunch, and then it's going to automatically really be nice to work with, uh, which is certainly an improvement over how the bar chart used to work. Okay, so looking at the portfolio tab again, um, we've already gone over the, the dividend here has been improved and is working much better. We're going to be seeing loading if it's not loading properly, and then you can refresh the page so you know if it's not calculating. Um, I've also added yield on cost per position to the spreadsheet. This was something that I had done on my own copy, but a lot of people were asking for, so you'll see this, cop uh, this column in the new version when you switch. And I also added a column here for realized gain. So if you ever sell a stock and you actually like realize a profit or a loss, um, I think it's interesting to track as well. So you can see here, there are a few stocks in my portfolio that I have sold uh, and then bought back. So for example, let's take, let's pick on BitFarms here. Um, I'm down really far on BitFarms at the moment, but previously I had sold them at a gain. And so that's uh, an interesting thing just to track in here as well. It's kind of a lifetime realized gain loss. And I also, just was curious about my all-time performance. So for example, this is just a combination of your unrealized gain or loss, uh, plus or minus any dividends you've received, plus or minus any realized gain. So it actually makes more sense here if we look at Acon, because I have an unrealized loss with them, but I've received dividends and I've received, you know, I have had a realized gain. And so this is kind of my all-in performance. This is a pretty like untypical measurement, I think. Not a lot of people are looking at this, but I find it interesting. So I'm just going to leave it in the template uh, so you can uh, see it as well if you want. Okay, on the transactions tab, I did just make a few improvements in here, pretty much just cleaning up calculation issues surrounding situations when you buy US stocks with Canadian dollars. This is a situation that happens for usually wealth simple trade users who are not using wealth simple premium. Um, but yeah, if that affects you, then it will improve. And if that doesn't affect you, then you don't need to worry about it. And then also on the Sparkline tab, I just made a few minor improvements in here. Uh, just to display the information a little bit nicer and same with extra spark lines just some small improvements here kind of behind the scenes that you might not notice but there's just been general improvements and also on the watch list tab just some small improvements to way things are calculated and, and stuff like that and the information is displayed and then throughout the entire sheet there has just been small little uh, formatting and, and, and improvement stuff like that going on. Okay, um, I have also added on the splits tab a column here for non-cash adjustment. You've probably never used the cash adjustment or non-cash adjustment cells, but in the event where all of your portfolio, um, all of your positions are adding up exactly in your portfolio, and what I mean by that is you have the correct average price, you have the correct gain and loss and the correct holdings and all that, and you've verified that these are all matching exactly what's going on in your broker, but you're having an you're having a problem on your summary tab where your totals or your cash are not adding up. And then what you can do is on the splits tab, if your cash is not adding up, first of all, you can adjust that using cash. You can just put in plus or minus like a positive or negative value in here to start adjusting your cash. Only do this if your positions are all exactly correct but your totals are off for the portfolio which sometimes happens it, it has i have seen it a few times with some users portfolios and uh, once that's done then you can also adjust the portfolio balance if the portfolio balance is off but your cash is correct uh, then you can put in a positive or negative value in here and um, anyways it'll help you adjust um, to get your portfolio correct in the case where there's some errors and you can sort of find some errors sometimes especially if you have imported an entire position without typing in all of the historical transactions, like every single buy and sell. If you just do one, uh, one import, then sometimes you can have some portfolio issues. If you do have any problems with this, just shoot me an email. My email is in the welcome tab here, and uh, I can help you out with that and walk you through it. But also, in general, I did create something called the import helper tab. Um, there's a big 
giant block of text in here that uh, you can read on your own time. And this is more for the people who want to import a portfolio without putting in every single historical buy or sell, because that can be tedious or very time consuming, especially if you have a long history. And this is a way to basically bring in your whole portfolio with just a couple of actions and it's much, much quicker. But if you do that, it's going to introduce a couple of errors that you're going to see, which I describe in here. And those errors can be rectified here using the cash and non-cash adjustments. It's all in this description here. And uh, if it applies to you, you can go ahead and read it. And if it doesn't apply to you, don't worry about it at all. This is totally optional. So yeah, that's uh, that pretty much sums up all of the improvements to the sheet. Biggest improvements, like I said, are the inclusion of the Neo Exchange, NYSE, ARCA, and American, and uh, really big improvements to the way the dividends are calculated among everything else that I've just described. So if you want to get the spreadsheet, there is a link in the description below where you can get it. And if you're already a Sheet user and you want to basically upgrade from your current version to version 3.5, this is how we do it. So you're going to receive an email from me with a link back to the Google Drive folder where you originally downloaded the copy. And it's going to look something like this. You have seen this screen before if you've already downloaded it. So what you need to do is you want to open up the blank template. And again, you want to hit File, Make a Copy, and you want to name this something. So I'm going to call it... Alpine Dividends Portfolio version 3.5. You can call yours whatever you want. And you just hit make a copy. And this is going to, again, save that copy into your Google Sheet. Don't worry about this script. I can't get rid of the macro for some reason. I keep trying to delete it. Even if you click here, it's just going to go nowhere. Um, so don't worry about that. And just hit make a copy. And when it opens, this is going to be the copy that you named in your Google Drive. And this is going to be a unique file different from the old version that you're using. So I recommend opening two tabs up here, one with the new version and one with the old version. And we're just going to copy the values over one tab at a time. And you're going to see it's only going to take about two minutes, probably three minutes to just move over. So first of all, just go into the portfolio tab on the new version, version 3.5. And then on your other one, go to the same thing, go to the portfolio tab, select cells here. Uh, all of the blue cells that you have information in, just press Command C or Control C if you're on a computer, uh, not a computer, um, a Windows computer, and then hit paste in here and uh, it's just going to drop in all of the stuff that you already have. If you just take a quick look, if you have random bits of formatting in here with like little boxes around them that you don't want, come up here, hit this, borders, clear those, and if you want that little line to be under the top cells, just drop it like that. And uh, now we have the portfolio tab completed. Okay, so next thing we go back to the old version, version 3.4. Sparkline, we don't need anything in your deposits and withdrawals tab. Again, come in here and select all of the information that you have in the blue cells. So come down all the way to the bottom, wherever that is for you. Hit Command C or Control C. And then in your deposits withdrawals tab, just select the first cell up here, right click and hit paste. Again, if you have any weird little formatting issues, I don't know why it does that, but just clear that with this. And uh, if you want a line up top, it's up to you. It doesn't really matter. Uh, now you have all of your deposits in there as well. OK, the next thing that we're going to need is information for our transactions. So we have to go to the old version. Your version, probably version 3.4 for you, transactions tab. I'm already down at the bottom here, so I'm going to select again all of the blue cells. Actually, in this case, if you've ever bought um, Canadian, uh, no, sorry, US stocks with Canadian dollars, I'm going to recommend that you select all the blue cells plus the three cells to the right. So we're going to select there and scroll up until we have everything and just stop here on line two. So we're going to press command C. And again, in this case, I'm going from column B over to column N, just because sometimes if you have bought US stocks with Canadian dollars, you will have tampered with the numbers over here. And this is the fastest way to just get all of that information in. So once we press command C, then we're going to go back to the new version into the transactions tab. And we're going to paste here in cell B4 the top left, you know, the top cell for ticker, we're going to hit paste. Okay. Again, we've got some weird little formatting thing going on here. It's no big deal. We're just going to clear that and just drop back in that nice little line there. So everything looks fresh. Okay, we need to do the same thing for dividends. So we're going to go to the old version uh, and grab our dividends. Just select the blue cells here. It's going to be a bit easier for us. So select all of the blue cells, come over here, hit copy. And then in the first cell here, hit paste. Again, we have a small little formatting thing going on here. You can leave it if you want, but I'm pretty picky about that. So I just want to clear it. And then I want to put a nice little line here just so everything is looking nice and fresh. 
Okay, we're going to continue on. Um, the next tab that you might have uh, information here is in the splits. You may or may not have something in splits. In my case, I do have something, so I'm just going to come here and copy. Um, yeah, I'm going to copy these blue cells. Actually, I'll just copy right across. It's going to be fine. It's good enough. Uh, if you have information in here, just grab all of it. And then in the new version, again, just come here and hit paste. If you have, again, formatting issues, just simply clear it and then adjust as necessary. Okay, the next tab that you may have information in would be the Convert Money tab. On my old version, I have never used this because I'm a Wealth Simple Trade user without premium, but if you have information in here, just grab the blue cells that you have stuff in and then come into your new version and hit paste. If you have something in your watch list, uh, you can also bring that in as well. So in my case, I've got a few things in here in the watch list. Um, let's just grab all of those ones that I have values for. I hit Command C on that selection of the blue cells, come to the first top left blue cell and hit paste. Again, I'm just going to clear out this little tiny formatting thing and drop in like that. And that's it. So I've actually transferred all of the information in it's pretty fast. If I wasn't talking and if I was just doing it myself, it would probably take two minutes. Maybe with me talking, it takes a little bit longer. And then what you want to do now is you want to check the summary tab uh, on your new version and your old version and make sure they are the same. So here we can toggle on them. I want to max. I'm going to hit command, uh, option command left and right and just toggle back and forth between the two sheets. And here I can see as I'm doing this that the total account balance is the same. Net deposits are same, stock value is the same, the cash is the same, dividends received are the same. Basically, everything is the same except for the yield is slightly different, and that is fine. The yield and dividend income is expected to be a little bit different because we have changed our source data from trailing 12-month dividend to forward annual dividend. So these ones, it's okay if they're different, but everything else should be exactly the same. If it's not exactly the same, then it means you probably just missed something. So like go back and check like some of the more obscure tabs like splits or convert money or something, or make sure you did in fact actually grab all cells, um, you know, in the transactions or all the dividends uh, to find out where your error is. Now I did notice here when I'm when I'm switching tabs that my dividend chart is changing down here, and that's because in my old version I have about a year and a half worth of dividends. But on my new version, uh, the template comes with a standard 12 months, and I just need to increase this to reflect the actual amount of months that I've been receiving dividends. And the way that we do that is we come down here, super easy, just grab the bottom row here and just drag it down. And you can go as far as you want just to see how many you need. I've gone a little bit too far here. I went three months too far, so I'm just going to go and delete those last three months. And that's it. And when we come up here, now it's looking exactly the same between the two different versions. So there you go, guys. Um, that's how you just upgrade from your current version to the new version. Hopefully that's easy enough and you can get all of the benefits and improvements in the new version. If you've done any customizations to your own copy, um, you're going to have to bring those in again on your own time, but that's no problem. And if you're not using the spreadsheet and you want to use the spreadsheet, then the link is in the description below where you can get it. And to be honest, I think it's worth it. Uh, there's a lot of happy users using the spreadsheet. I like using the spreadsheet. And yeah, so definitely check it out and uh, give it a try. And like I said, my email is in the welcome tab. So if you have any issues with switching, or if you're a new user and you just kind of like have, you know, not getting the hang of something, feel free to shoot me an email and I'll be able to help you out. So guys, thank you very much for watching. Thanks for using the spreadsheet. Have a great day and I will see you in the next video.